Ball six. So not as uh, in disadvantage uh, position as uh, William Buick and Fallen for you. They're set. Off and running in this coronation stakes and away to a fair start to laugh out loud is one of the first to get going up there too on the inside going through his homecoming queen to take up the early running from Samatar and in fourth position early is Irish history they're a length and a half in uh, an advance of a star scope and further back on the inside intense pink further back in the field then bougie de Moore giving them a start Rosaliana who's right out the back with fallen for you and a long last is cardigan on settling down home coming queen is out in front by a length to in second laugh out loud a length away on the inside the orange jacket of Samatar a length further back in the field then follows uh, Irish history two lengths away is star scope on the outside of intense pink a length and a half further back then on the outside bougie d'amour for France from Rosaliana fallen for you giving them a long start and two lengths to cardigan racing up towards the entrance of the home straight three and a half furlongs to travel and it's Joseph O'Brien on homecoming queen leading by a length to laugh out loud on the inside Samatar has had the run of the race a length away then is Irish history followed by Starscope around the outside in behind them battling away is intense pink followed then by Bougie D'Amour but he kicks for home Joseph as they come inside the two now and it's homecoming queen in front but here come the challenges Samatar's out of the pocket down the outside now starting to swoop is fallen for you fallen for you coming home at 100 miles an hour grabs the lead now with a, with a furlong left to go and a sprinted three in front. Starscope goes into second, followed by Irish history, but Fallen For You is racing away here. Fallen, Fallen For You goes on to win it for William Buick and for John Gosden. Goes on to win it well by three or four lengths. In second is Starscope, third then is Irish history, followed further back then by Bougie D'Amour, and they're followed then by Samatar. A long gap in the field, the laugh out loud from Intense Pink. Homecoming Queen has beaten only two home. And they are Rosaliana and Cardigan. Fallen for you, a classy filly. Here she is crossing the line for William Buick. And what a meeting they're having, he and John Gosden. Second is Starscope, Jimmy Fortune. In third, then, is Irish history, Mikel Barcelona. Fourth, then, very tight. Oh, that is uh, very, very tight. Far side. It's Samatar, near side is Bougie d'Amour. Only a nose in that. And then a gap to Laugh Out Loud, who has not run her race at all. The reports were that she had been working very well at home, but when you look at her form, you, you thought, well, it's just a little bit too much a bridge to, uh, you know, to get over. Um, but he's, he's also done ridden it so a very, well. He rode a very patient race. He was second last turning into the straight, switches her wide, nothing interrupts her momentum or her rhythm, and she quickens up there into a three length lead. And John Gosden has the one too because Starsko gets the better of the battle for second over Irish history. But that, you know, it is amazing, isn't it? How the, the form can just turn on its, you know, the things that you would never have thought would happen homecoming queen was desperately disappointing yes, she hasn't she's a oh, tiny little filly obviously all the racing that she's had is starting to tell on her and uh, they didn't let her get away and she was first into the headwind where william buick uh, kept his filly it tucked tucked away and came up to the outside and whoosh went past them as if they were all standing still uh, this filly obviously has started to improve at a very very fast pace because as you said the last time she ran was on the, the all weather and in a group free and didn't even win it so and William Buick showing that he can ride a race from the front as he did in the first race on newfangled or he can ride a waiting race as he does on this filly fallen for you and he is I mentioned earlier he's not even 24 years old yet and he is developing into such a wise jockey just gosh, you can see his right oh, leg coming leg. right up the saddle that. there. No? He lost contact there with the horse. Um, he was definitely putting all his energy into pushing her forwards. 
obviously, but uh, when you're riding in Group 1 races, I suppose uh, you, <laughs> you have to keep going till you get past that winning line. We thought Mick Shannon might be the trainer more likely to have a 1-2, yes. but Samatar came there travelling well, didn't pick yeah, up. Didn't. Laugh Out Loud was with the pace, they've dropped ran, they've away. Ran, they've run uh, reasonable races, but... Uh, these two, don't forget the second horse here, finished second in our 1,000 guineas. Um, so you've seen a very special uh, race here when you've got John Gosden having a 1-2, emulating uh, Sir Henry Cecil, who had the 1-2 in the race before. Your Majesty, Your Royal Highnesses, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, what a day, what a week for John Gosden and for William Buick. Today, victorious in the Group 1 race, the Coronation Stakes, with a filly owned by Normandy Stud, fallen for you. Yes, and justified applause as well. Not only owned by the Normandy Stud, bred by them as well and this is going to be a very very valuable filly she's improved so much we saw her at Kempton on the all weather two starts ago in May and that was the meeting that was transferred from here at Ascot to uh, Kempton on the all weather she started five to one on that day ridden by Ryan Moore and she ran out an effortless winner but uh, then went to Lingfield. Back to the seven there from a mile. And uh, was beaten into sixth position by Cha Cha Medi. So, fallen for you. She's uh, come up trumps today. That time, incidentally, is 4.63 seconds outside the record. So, ground very much on the slow side today. Really is has got in at uh, that rain that we did have overnight so slow times but fallen for you is uh, a really good winner from starscope the stable mate and irish history running a place for Godolphin back in third and the two classic winners they were a long way behind them samatar fourth and homecoming queen that smile says it all. Let's check the full result now on this coronation stakes with John. Now the winner was fallen for you, William Buick, 12 to 1. Second, Scarscope, 11 to 1. And third, Irish History, also 11 to 1. And a 1 2 in this race for John Gosden. And get ready for Gatewood in the next. There'll be fortunes after this, all doubles and trebles going on it. A 1 2 for the winning trainer, John Gosden. John, what was the trigger for this performance from Fallen for You today? Well, I always thought she was our best filly last year, and uh, I gave the wrong instructions in the filly's mile. She was second to Mayhill a bit green, and I said be up there because it was riding fast and the speed was holding a new market, and that was riding her back to front. And then she had a holiday, came back, and I think she just had that in her mind. She was always too keen. Uh, Ryan won on her at uh, Kempton, but it wasn't where we wanted to be. And we ran her behind a lovely older filly of Henry's who was second in the Windsor Forest the other day, over seven, and she, she got in trouble, but she learned a lot. She trained beautifully, worked beautifully last uh, Sunday morning. Really thrilled with her work. And, uh, you know, we were ready for a big run if it slotted. They went hard up front. There's a headwind. She sat there, but she is classy. It's not a fluke. Not a fluke indeed. And William Buick standing close by. William, John was just saying about the pace of that race and how well that suited her today. Yeah, well, I, I always thought previously when she's run, things have kind of conspired against her. And today, Everything went towards her. It was perfect for her. A good gallop. She got cover from the wind, and she was in a good rhythm. And she, she, she finished the race really well, and she won very easily. And you know, like like John said, it's it's not fluke. This is this is how good she is, and and hopefully from now on it's onwards and upwards for her. Clearly, you've always believed the team has always believed that she's very good. But how impressed were you by that turn of foot? I was very impressed with it. Yeah, you know, taking on the best of a generation. Of course, I'm impressed. His Royal Highness the Duke of York making the presentation here. Philippa Cooper, the owner breeder who owns Normandy Stud, and that's the name under which her horse is run. That is a big, big trophy to take home. And for John Gosden, he is enjoying the best Royal Ascot of his career. 
three winners already and out in front now in the race to be leading trainer he's never quite managed that yet I mean he's had good Royal Ascots in the past but they have a one two in a group one and Sir Henry Cecil also enjoying a golden week and they have the two of them it's a great day for Newmarket so far they have displaced Aidan O'Brien who's had two hot favorites beaten today homecoming queen and astrology neither of whom even made the first three and William Buick well everybody now starting to appreciate his talents and mentioned earlier he was born in Norway and his father was an eight-time champion jockey in Scandinavia he came to ride for my father when he was about 14 he was tiny he weighed about five stone and, and dad thought he was such a good rider he took a thousand to one he got a bookmaker to give him a thousand to one that William Buick this was before he'd ever ridden a, a winner ever ridden in a race actually he got a bookmaker to give him a thousand to one that he would one day be champion jockey and it may yet happen Let's have a look back at some of the bits of this coronation stakes then, uh, with the winner, of course, not one of the leading contenders, and the two 1,000 Guinness winners from uh, the Curra and also Newmarket being well beat. Here's the start. Fortunately, it's a very windy day out there, so we're like from a slightly different angle. Uh, we'll just have a look at Cardigan there. She's only had one run before. You'll see her white face. She breaks a little bit awkwardly, but also, look, here is the winner on the extreme right from the highest draw of all, and... Uh, with the likelihood of a strong gallop, rider Keith William Buick drops her at the back. But you see Cardigan, you'll see her white face. She's messed around a little bit by the others, and she's very inexperienced, isn't she? Yeah, well, that's the problem. It's very awkward for Paul Hanningham because he doesn't want to clip heels. But William Buick's done particularly well because he knows he can't go that wide. He needs to slot his filly in. And as well, he's, he's saved from all the buffeting of the wind. Plus, as well, he knows that the one to beat has in the last couple of uh, runs, including the good win at Newmarket, made the running. And also, everybody else is not going to want to let her get too far ahead, are they? And I think this has resulted in a fairly strong gallop early on here. They yeah. get very well strung out, don't they? They went quick, and as you alluded to, you know, a lot of the horses that raced up at the pace were, were beaten when they turned for home. So we have homecoming queen in front. Uh, the Mick Shannon pair in the white jacket and the orange colours in second and third place is following her through. But you have to look right to the left now to find the winner. She's just making a little bit of progress fallen for you in the pink and white jacket. She's just hidden by Rossiana. So at the three quarters of a mile from home, there is the winner. There is the second place horse. There is the third. And you see the front three at this stage do not figure in the placings of the race. So let's have a look back what came into the home straight and still fallen for you she's a little bit oops, sorry. she's a little way behind uh, the others on the outside making her challenge there is Samatar in the orange jacket perfect position for Martin Harley there I thought yeah he was absolutely delighted with his fill he said she's run an absolute cracker he said he'd no real excuses for her you can just see homecoming queen coming at the end of her tether and perfect slot spoke to Frankie the Tory he rode Mick Shannon's other horse said just felt a little bit flat didn't pick it up at all she's had of course quite a few runs already this season this was a run number seven for her second and third horses John Gosden's uh, horse Starscope she's been second at Newmarket the 2000 units she's been beaten over further since another solid run at Group 1 level for her and also the Dolphin Horse Irish history in third place there she's run around a little bit late on but it's only her third start in the, the toughest task she's had to date yeah definitely but I think the number one thing we've got to take out of this race is whatever John gosden has got running at the rest of this meeting you've got to try and be on it there's only nine races left but that's the, <laughs> the advice now but fallen for you then she'd uh, been one of the leading contenders for the two-year-old races the Mayhill and the Phillies Mile last year lesser company until today but she shot back up to the top of the rankings but we now have quite a few fillies three-year-olds who've won group one races and it'll take a little while yet as the season progresses to work out exactly which one is the best William Buick came to Royal Ascot this year having ridden three winners at this meeting in his life he's ridden three this week he's doubled it. he's taken his career total to six he is the leading jockey so far this week and he's not finished yet because he's got Gatewood coming up for John Gosden in the next hey, right, yeah? yep. and Gosden also has Beachfire in that race